I'd like to call this meeting of the Alexander County Board of Commissioners into session. Commissioner uh, Chairman Jennings is uh, under the weather a little, so therefore I'm going to take charge of the meeting tonight in, in place of him. And at this time, I'd ask each and every one of you to please rise for the invocation, followed by the pledge. Our kind and most gracious Heavenly Father, we appreciate the opportunity, the freedoms that we have that we're able to gather here together tonight. We appreciate the things that you have done for us and the sacrifices you've made in order for us to be the Christians and the people that we are. Lord, we'd ask that you would be with the members of our federal government, our state, and our local government, be with our military personnel both at home and abroad, and be with those folks who are sick and afflicted. Help each and every one to be the best they can be. Help us at the things that we say. Remember that our, reminding us that our words sometimes can cause more damage than anything else that we can do. Lord, we ask that you be with us as we go through these proceedings. Be with us and bless each person in, in our world. For we ask this in thy name. Amen. Amen. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. At this time, under commissioner's report, does anyone have anything under commissioner's report that they'd like to uh, discuss or say anything about? If not, there's a couple things that I'd like to touch base on. Number one, <clears throat> February is Black History Month. Yesterday I had the opportunity to attend a function that was uh, for black history in Alexander County. It was attended by a large group of folks that were there. And I just want to recognize the fact that the governor of the great state of North Carolina has issued a proclamation declaring the state of North Carolina to honor the uh, Black History Month. And it was a very interesting uh, uh, meeting. Uh, so I want each and every one of us to remember that and uh, what goes on in our country and the things and the progress that we have made over the years that has made us become a better country. So uh, you get an opportunity and you get a chance to go to some of the black history events or exhibits, I'd advise each and every one of us to take that opportunity and do so. It was a fulfilling experience yesterday and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And it was held at the Macedonia Baptist Church down on NC 90 East. And uh, it was a very, very uh, well attended and a very good event. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak with those folks like I had the opportunity to do so yesterday. Also, this past week, there was uh, some discussion and different people called, different comments have been made and discussed about uh, the county looking at new care. And uh, I'm just gonna throw some bullets out here. This is for information purposes only. This is not up for discussion tonight. It's not on the agenda. But there are several things that, that uh, we felt like that we need to get out in the open as it came from the Board of Commissioners and the things that we're looking at. None of this is in concrete yet. So these are just some bullet points that we want to express to the community and to the news media so that we can get the factual information out that the county itself is looking at at this time. And I know this has been a, uh, one of those events that's caused a considerable amount of uh, conversation. Uh, the county is considering a contract with New Care, New Care Carolina Ambulance Incorporated to provide convalescent transformation services and on-call emergency medical services. And I want to emphasize this and I want to emphasize it very clearly tonight. No plans for eliminating any EMS positions and this will only be supplemental assistance only. We are not under any circumstance going to eliminate any EMS personnel. The county values the hard work and dedication of our EMS and rescue squad. Last week I received a phone call from Rick Gilbert. He asked me my opinion about it and I told him straight out and I'll tell each and every one of y'all straight out. The one thing I will tell you this, there's people been on Facebook and they've been saying things. I want everybody in this room and in this community to know I'm not stupid based on what people have said. And some of them just came in the door. And I want people to know that. I am not a stupid person. And I want that understood in this community. 
I do the best I can at this job. And I'm not stupid based on what some people might say. And I want that clearly understood. County values the hard work and dedication of our EMS and rescue squad. And they mean it. We do value your service. You do an outstanding job for us. Justin Deal knows he's picked me up. He knows how I feel about our EMS service. He knows how I feel about the rescue squad. I don't have to say much about how I feel at all. Currently, county averages approximately 450 to 500 calls per month. They can handle the workload, but needs to be addressed, and we need to address that issue. County EMS has now 29 full-time employees and 21 part-time employees, along with two employees with the Alexander County Rescue Squad. Employees take up three 24-hour paramedic crews, two at the Tuttlesville base and one at the Bethlehem base. New care's fee schedule closely compares to county's fee schedule. New care service provided at no cost to this county, each patient billed directly. There's no cost to the county. Expensive to hire another full-time EMS crew, approximately $750,000 for salaries and ambulance. And we got this information from our uh, EMS people. Primary focus for new care would be convalescent transport to area doctors and hospitals for the county. Revenues are much lower than expenses for this service. Back EMS service, backup EMS service through new care would be an asset in case of high call volume. Safety, health, and welfare of citizens is our number one priority. And I want to stress again, at no time has this county commission board ever said that they were going to eliminate emergency medical services in Alexander County. At no time have we said that we were going to eliminate Alexander County Rescue Squad. Folks, I don't know how much more blunt I can be about that, but I can assure you as long as Larry Yetter sits where he's sitting right now, the EMS is not going anywhere. And I want that understood. And I am as sincere as I can be. And I want people to know that. And this is coming from my heart and nowhere else. And I am not a stupid person. And I don't appreciate people saying I'm stupid. And I mean it. And I'm tired of people saying those kinds of things about me. If you got under my skin, Yes, you got under my skin. And if you want to know how I feel about it, now you know. And I hope the ones that said it understand who I'm talking to. Thank you very much. Is there any other commissioner that has anything? Larry, uh, if you don't mind, you covered a lot of territory. There's basically three things that were discussed as far as uh, uh, new care. One was, as you said, the, the transportation of people who have special needs and need to be handled in an ambulance. The elderly, the handicapped, whatever, that can schedule their calls because if emergency personnel are doing that and an emergency call comes in, the emergency has to take priority. Takes priority. The second thing is we have discussed, uh, we've got very capable people in EMS, we've got very capable people in the rescue squad, but if we had a major, uh, I'll say accident, whether it was a storm or a wreck or what, uh, we don't have enough service to take care of all of it. So uh, that was where the idea of having somebody for possible backup uh, came from. And then uh, to evaluate if there's any other uh, backups that are needed. But basically, it was uh, private sector uh, help and uh, emergency backup help. And that's all that's it all was. been talked about. That's exactly right. And the one thing that I will say about our emergency service and AMS personnel, and I will say about our rescue squad, I know what kind of training they've gone through. I know who they are, and I know what they do. And I know the things that they've done for me when they picked me up and some other folks they've picked up. I would put our EMS people and our Alexander County Rescue Squad up against anybody's system that they have in anywhere in the state of North Carolina. They're very, very, very good. They're very efficient, and I am proud whenever I see those guys coming and I see them going because I don't have to worry about them because I know they're extremely well-qualified, well-trained individuals. And I, I just want to make sure that everybody understands that. And uh, I, for one, totally appreciate it. Well, I, I'd like to just throw one thing out there. I think, <clears throat> and I'm 
probably going to get uh, criticized for this, but I think that was an irresponsible headline at the newspaper on Wednesday. And um, we were asked no questions about that, not asked to explain anything. And some people took some wild, uh, some uh, information out of context. So if you have any questions, come to us. We'll be glad to answer them for you. Um, another thing I'd like to uh, say something. Uh, Justin Deal came to our meeting last month and asked a question about uh, related to the Sandy Hook shootings in Connecticut. And we said we'd take that under advisement. As it, I, and I just wanted to get back to you on this. Uh, as of this time right now, we have not heard any recommendations from the school board, which or the school superintendent, and that is their purview, and uh, they need to come back after discussing this with the uh, sheriff. They need to come back to us with some recommendations. Thanks, sir. Uh, That's all I have. Larry, I've got one comment I'd like to make. Go ahead. Uh, it's, it's my voice. It's why I'm not presiding tonight, but I'd like to talk about a real live case of EMS and why I think the arrangement with new care would be a better arrangement for the county. I have a mother that recently passed away. She would have been 100 in December the 15th. She was uh, a month and a half short of being 100. And EMS would have to transport her to Valdez General Hospital on a monthly basis for wound care. And that would be an all-day event from the time they picked her at her house, took her to Valdez, waited for her to be treated, and brought her back to her home. Now, the reason I bring it up is, under if we have an agreement with New Care, New, the EMS service would not have to pick her up. New Care could pick her up. Now, my mother, when she was capable of conversing, she had nothing but praise for the care and the caring that was provided to her by the EMS service. And the family felt the same way. And if you don't remember her name, her name was Elizabeth, Elizabeth Jennings, lived out the golf course. What I'm saying is now if new care is involved and we have an arrangement with new care, new care pr can provide that transportation and that frees up the EMS to go on emergency calls. And uh, I have nothing against the EMS because they provide her great care, but it just makes common sense that new care could provide that convalescent transportation as opposed to taking that ambulance, the EMS ambulance out of service to trans my, transport my mother for uh, wound care. And so that's what we're trying to achieve here is give, as Larry said, complementary service and additional services and not tie up EMS services with non-emergency calls. And even though it was difficult, number one, to speak about my mother, it was difficult for me to speak, period, but I felt it was necessary for me to give that comment because uh, as, we, as has been said here, we were not trying, and again, uh, as uh, Commissioner uh, Mayberry said, we as commission value the personnel at EMS. We value the services of the Alexander County Rescue Squad. And our intention is not to eliminate, which has been said before, any positions. It's only to add supplementary services that would do convalescent transportation and would, we, would be back up in an in dire emergency situation for EMS and the Alexander County Rescue Squad. And I don't know how to say it any plainer than that. What I would like to see is the headline in the Tailsville Times uh, next week as opposed to the headline that I saw this week Commissioners considering outsourcing paramedics. That was a totally false headline. 
And I think those that are listening and watching and the folks that are attending can understand what we're now saying. So I'm hoping this coming week we can get a headline that says it the way it's supposed to be. That's all I have to say. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Well, I, I would like to say that probably nobody in this room has been inside an Alexander County amulets more than I have. <laughs> And, that, well, and Larry, I'm not bragging, I'm race. just saying that I'm thankful that they're there and there's no way that I would want to do away with them. Four of my immediate family in the past year, including myself, and uh, I have a lot of friends uh, in the EMS. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Uh, before you, ladies and gentlemen, you have your agenda. I'd entertain a motion to uh, approve the agenda as is. I make a motion we approve. Second. Motion's made and second. Is there any discussion? <coughs> there being none, all those in favor indicate raising your right hand. All those opposed likewise. Item number one on the agenda of the night is public comment. Under public comment, uh, persons who wish to speak concerning items on this agenda or who wish to speak about a matter relating to county government other than a public hearing matter on this agenda would allow to come forward and address the board at this time. Do we have anybody that signed up? There's nobody signed up. Does anybody want to speak? There being none, we'll move on to item number two. So at this time you're saying we need to come up to the front, please, and give us your name and everything, please. I'd appreciate it. Just keep it, you know. I, I'm sorry, but there's other people in the world that don't. I know who you are. For anybody that don't know, I am Justin Deal. Thank you for letting me Thank come you. up here. As of right now, you're not going to entertain anything as far as the EMS, the new care and everything. We'll tonight. look at this. We'll look at uh, as, as far as this, public comment. I mean, you're not public. having a public comment tonight on that, as far as anything. Uh, as no, far I as mean, when, you know, we bring it up for the uh, thing, and it'd be up for discussion and everything. Right, open discussion whenever you just get right. further and I mean, information. Right, I mean, make a comment right now. Comment like. now I about it. I mean, anytime you want to, Justin. You're free to. Okay. And you and I have had this discussion over yeah, I know. you day, so. I mean, I just want you to understand, our, I think y'all sort of understand our point of view at EMS. I mean, that's our livelihood. And we just want to make sure that this time next year we got a job. You do. And that's what we wanted to be reassured of. May I make a comment? Yes, sir. I'll apologize to you and everybody in EMS, all the employees, because uh, the information should have been presented to you more accurately than it was. Mm -hmm. uh, one reason that, uh, of course, with a contract, you got to come to terms before you can really say much of anything. But uh, once that was done, it should have been presented more, uh, I'll say, more open and more clearly. And that's what our concern was, Darrell, is we feel like it was, and I'm not, Say what you're any say. stones anybody and Larry you know me I know we felt like a lot of this stuff was done under table shady and that's what concerned us because you know and I mean with it coming out like it did I mean could you if you were sitting <laughs> where we is at I hope you could understand where we was coming from I've been in Alexander County all my life and, and it ain't rumor, never been up a shady rumor business. will spread a lot quicker than the <laughs> truth any place in the county I and I understand how it happened uh, we didn't do anything underhanded backhanded right. uh, any way shape or form uh, the uh, new care was asked to put together a proposal and then there was questions and that kind of stuff. And uh, if that hadn't worked out, there would have never been any, anything to talk about anyway. Right. But uh, when that was worked out, we should have, it, it should have been presented to the employees better because I understand your concern. Yes, sir. Sir. And Justin, I, I can't, you know, I understand the concern. After reading that article, I was mad at us. Uh, you know, but the, one of the reasons that it was put or tabled was because uh, Commissioner Robertson was not there. I've been sick. I didn't have time to review it. Um, there were some other questions out there, so we just, you know, decided to hold off. We understand, you know, we probably should have said a little bit more about it, but, uh, uh, you know, there's still some questions out there for us. I've got, I've still got questions. We haven't okay. approved anything yet. But you guys are okay. Do not worry. I promise you. And I, I give you my word. You know, none, no EMS positions are going to be eliminated. Larry and Judy have both mentioned, as far as the quality of service, mm -hmm. uh, 
EMS in Alexander County, as far as I'm concerned, is head and shoulders above everybody else. And we used to, I used to pick at Larry and Norris Kiever when he was commissioner that they would make poster childs <laughs> for uh, EMS because both of them had major heart attacks and EMS took care of them. Yeah. Uh, they got as good a care from EMS as they got when they got in the hospital, knew what they were doing, and uh, uh, did a fine job. And uh, Judy's already mentioned her family and the care they've given. And we have a responsibility to the taxpayers. Um, you know, you guys do a great job, but you, you are being taken away from emergency calls. So we're trying to solve a problem. Now, we could add another crew, but we don't, if, from the numbers that I've gotten, that's not the best appropriation of the money right now. Right. So. I, I don't know how to make it any plainer than what I said uh, about my mother's care. Mm -hmm. And within that comment, or those comments, uh, even though Mr. Robertson uh, didn't make a, a comment about what I had to say, I saw the level of care that EMS gave my 99-year-old mother. No discussion that we have had, I can tell you that without repeating myself, <coughs> So, but you will hear me clearly, we have had no discussions, N no means no. You understand that part, right? Mm -hmm. No discussions to eliminate any positions in EMS in the rescue squad. I don't know how to make it any clearer than that. The confusion lies in this article. If you read this article, this article is wrong. What Larry read is right. So if you have any confusion after you leave the room, if you want to stop and see me after the meeting, I'd be happy to talk to you too. But you can leave this room and, and feel confident that we have not discussed your job or anybody else's job at EMS that you were not going to have a job in the future. The only discussions we've had and the reason we haven't had those discussions in public is that we have not finished negotiating the contract with new care and we can't talk about that in public. Hmm. That's a matter that's talked about in closed session. So do you have any other questions you'd like to ask? Well, the only other thing that I want to make a comment on is we work in this field and we understand how emergency and convalescent works. And I can promise you, we will not make this county a dime running emergency calls. If we lose our convalescence, somebody's gonna have to draw a line somewhere in the sand. So we gotta be careful in outsourcing convalescent also, because that's where we do make our money. We're looking at all, all the options. So, I mean, what I'm saying, and you as a respectable board, a year from now, if we lose our convalescent calls, and you see we're operating in the red, I run my own business, Brian knows, and I know if I'm operating in the red, I've got to start cutting something to get me out of that. That's our concern. We've got to be careful. I think we all need to get our heads put together here and make sure we're getting all the right information from the right people. And we'd be glad to help get you the proper information and, if you and ask no decisions have been made we have not <coughs> made a decision uh, they are making a proposal and when that proposal is finished then we're going to look at it but i'd be glad to talk to any of you about you know uh, we want to make sure we do have the right numbers so we're here contact us if you need us for the information because we've got it I, I would appreciate one thing even though i'm not uh chairman tonight but all the questions any questions you have would come to either me or to Rick French. There's no use you calling every member on this board and either you direct the questions to me or direct the questions to Rick French. Well, Bradley Earps, their supervisor, so go to Bradley first and get them together, and if he doesn't have an answer, then direct them. Yeah. That's correct. Good enough. Thank and you. And just before we leave, Justin, before we leave, one other thing. If you'll get you a DVD and record this meeting, you'll have proof that five commissioners said they supported EMS and Rescue Squad in Alexander County. And we appreciate that. But that's the way it is, buddy. Uh, Thank you, Justin. Yeah. All right, anybody else? All right, moving along to item number two on the agenda.
resolution in support of legislative goals adopted by the membership of the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Uh, gentlemen, a couple of weeks ago, I was the <coughs> voting delegate to the association's uh, 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 goals uh, committee in Raleigh. I attended that meeting. <coughs> and we have a resolution that we'd like to read tonight in support of these goals. And before I read the, uh, the resolution, let me tell you what the top five goals of the, <coughs> the committee uh, are. Number one is a opposed shift of state transportation responsibilities to the county. And they did, you know, just talk a little bit about that. I don't think there was anyone in the room that was in favor of anything on the transportation end coming back to the counties. The one thing that everybody talked about was what the tax rate would do to, to citizens in their counties uh, if they had to use taxpayers that just paid uh, property tax money to take care of the highways. And I don't think anybody in the room was in favor of sending that power shift back to the counties because of that cost. Number two is re reinstate ADM and lottery funds for school construction. That was a big topic there. They felt like that, uh, that they need to make sure that this money uh, was going where it was supposed to go and make sure that the schools received this, uh, 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 this proper funding. Number three was oppose unfunded mandates and shifts of state responsibilities to the county. That's something that all of us have talked about for several years and continue to talk about, and they're going to express uh, this and push for that goal to happen in this legislative session. Number four is preserve the existing local revenue tax base, and uh, that's a tremendous thing that uh, was talked about a little. I know that I uh, walked around and talked to several of the voting delegates you know, it amazes me that out of the 100 counties, uh, the number of small counties that are represented there on the, uh, on the committee, everyone, of course, was there. But the thing about it is, is these large counties have so many more representatives in Raleigh than what, uh, what we have as small counties. Uh, you look at the number of representatives that Mecklenburg, Wake, uh, Forsyth counties have, and you'll see that uh, uh, there's a... a tremendous amount of representation from these larger cities and uh, larger counties rather than they are in the smaller areas. So this preserving the existing local revenue base, they just hope it stays the same and that the larger counties don't try to do anything that would take more of the funding away. And number five, which was a big topic that was talked about quite a bit, is ensure adequate mental health funding. This brought up a tremendous amount of conversation, especially after the shooting that occurred in Connecticut. Uh, people talked a little, talked about guns, but they also talked about mental health. And there were several people there, Daryl, that you served on the board with, and uh, mental health, and Rick. And uh, the biggest thing and the, the biggest concern is the funding of mental health and to uh, stop cutting the funding for mental health and to continue to place money into the mental health fund so that we can get these folks the proper help that they need. And those were the major uh, five goals that they wanted to make sure that they push through the legislature to make sure that these things happen so that there be no more uh, effect of financial burden on the citizens of each county. And I'll read this resolution in support of legislative goals adopted by the membership of the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Whereas the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners was funded in 1908 as a membership organization to represent the interest of counties before the General Assembly. Whereas all 100 counties are voluntary members of the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners, making the NCACC the official voice of North Carolina counties. Whereas every two years, the membership of the NCACC develops and approves a package of legislative goals and proposals designed to protect and enhance <laughs> the interest of county governments and the citizens who live in our 100 counties. Whereas the process to generate this package of legislative goals is deliberate and inclusive and provides extensive opportunities for counties to be involved. Whereas Alexander County is an active participant within the NCACC and participated in the process to develop these legislative goals. Whereas more than 200 county officials representing 88 counties gathered in Durham County on January the 24th and 25th, 2013 and debated and ultimately approved 60 proposals submitted by counties to be included in the legislative goals package, whereas the attached proposals represent the collective wishes of all 100 counties. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Alexander County Board of Commissioners adopts this resolution in support of the legislative proposals adopted by the NCACC membership at its 2013 Legislative Goals Conference. Furthermore, be it resolved that copies of this resolution be transmitted to the members of the General Assembly representing Alexander County to let them know of our support for these issues. And I think that's a very important thing that we need to do. And I can also tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that at this conference, and I think Rick would agree, we were there together, I think that uh, uh, Rick would agree with me, it's probably the most argumentative session that I have ever attended. Uh, there was quite a uh, few new commissioners, and the arguments on these issues was uh, uh, very, very, very deliberate on some uh, people's parts, and they, uh, they, they really uh, stressed these issues and uh, a very <coughs> vocal uh, crowd of commissioners, and so it was uh, good to see them discuss this and come to a consensus about what they wanted the uh, association to do and what they wanted them to fight for. And gentlemen, I'd make that in the form of a motion. I make a motion we accept the resolution. I second. I, oh, sorry. Uh, no, you're, you're fine. I'll second the other one. Okay. <laughs> is, there, is there any discussion? Gentlemen. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. I appreciate the way you, you presented this. There are some things in here, though, that we need to sit down and take a look at and uh, do a little bit of backup with uh, because... Uh, I agree with all of these things, but there are some details that we need to explain to uh, the people in Raleigh uh, exactly where we stand because, uh, uh, for example, they talked several places in here about water quality. Uh, the last time I counted, there's like four state agencies that uh, look at water quality. Uh, they need to combine them into one so that you can go to one place, get one set of answers, and you don't have to worry about if that's compliant with everything. Uh, just things of that nature. Uh, I've got uh, 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 the uh, preserve existing local revenue. Uh, we need to add uh, Article 42 sales tax there. Uh, that was, uh, 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 we, we'll do that as a, a letter to them, but Article 42 sales tax was in place. Alexander County used that sales tax with uh, the other part that went to uh, the schools for capital improvements to do the projects that have been done at Alexander County Schools up until about uh, three years ago, and the General Assembly changed that and made it a point of sales rather than per capita distribution. It's when we talk about preserving existing local revenue base, uh, the state uh, if they had done it on the sidewalk with a gun, they would have been arrested. But because they were in the uh, legislature and did it, uh, it's still there. There's things like that that need to be uh, underlined and uh, made uh, uh, points of. Uh, one thing in here that I wholeheartedly think needs to be done is restore local control of school calendars. Uh, just so, some of them are not such major things. Some of them are very critical, but... Uh, I'd like to see us uh, approve the resolution and sit down and do a, a backup letter with these other items that need to be addressed also. I concur. I, I do too. And Daryl, what do you think our chances are? <laughs> uh, if we don't do it, zero. Zero. If we do it, uh, eventually they may get tired of hearing us complain about it. Right. And other, other small counties, it's not just Alexander. Uh, Larry mentioned it in his presentation. Uh, the smaller counties, there's about... Uh, a third of us that feel that these things need to be done. Uh, the larger counties have the control and they have uh, uh, not seen the, the need for it, but uh, if we quit, uh, it'll never be changed, so. That's true. The one thing I will tell you that we're talking about this resolution, uh, uh, the governor came and talked to us there for about an hour and he enlightened us on some things that uh, uh, we're very critical. The one thing that I will, you know, the governor has been extremely open about discussing revenues and uh, discussing the money situation. He was very open about Medicaid. He was very open about unemployment insurance. Uh, and he was uh, very open when he told the, uh, uh, told us that those that were gathered there because the snowstorm was moving in or the ice storm. He was uh, very matter of fact when he said, 
There is no additional money in Raleigh, and it is not raining out of the skies. And the one, 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 he, the one thing that really amazed me that he said that, and it didn't really amaze me, just the fact that he was being point blank, he said that uh, uh, the money was not there and that he was going to hurt, everybody was going to hurt, and that the state and the people of the state would probably hurt for a little while until we got the revenues under control with the amount of, of uh, debt that we had for uh, Medicaid and the amount of debt that we had for unemployment insurance that was going to have to be paid to the federal government. So their idea is to stop the federal government putting mandates on them. Of course, our idea is to stop them from putting mandates on us. So it was a very, very good meeting. Is there any other discussion? Uh, yes, just one thing. Um, <clears throat> tax and finance uh, legislative goal number three, uh, Authorize local revenue options. I agree with 99% of it, all these goals. Uh, this one I do have a problem with, and we've had this discussion before over the last four years. Um, <clears throat> but um, I just stepped down from the board of directors of the North Carolina Home Builders Association, and this is one of the things that we opposed was land transfer taxes uh, as a board member. Now it would be. Uh, it, it would not be uh, forthcoming of me to have voted to oppose land, land transfer taxes and then vote for it here. So I'm going to vote no, but uh, just know that 99% of these things I do agree with. I can understand that and respect that. One of the things that uh, they were looking at was the way to allow other counties to have the opportunity as far as motel, hotel tax and different taxes like that to be able to charge for room. And I sort of laughed. I said, well, we only have one motel, so that really won't affect us that bad. But that's one of the things that they were uh, uh, looking at is find different ways for uh, the counties to uh, gain revenue without raising taxes on property owners. And, and that's what they were looking at. And land transfer taxes and uh, some of these other fees uh, that other counties have uh, are bad for building, bad for real estate. And we don't have that problem here, but uh, I just, I, oh. you know, you understand my point. Those uh, are local options, though. Uh, that, that's not a state mandate. No. Uh, it'd have to be approved in Alexander County before. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I know. I know. It, has, it has nothing to do with Alexander County. Mr. Yoder, I have a, a, a comment about the unfunded mandates for folks who hadn't been keeping up with them. Uh, North Carolina has incurred, in round numbers, $2 billion dollars uh, in unfunded unemployment insurance and $2 billion in Medicaid mm -hmm. insurance. So that's a total of $4 billion in unfunded mandates that somebody is going to have to pay for. And uh, so the, the future between the state and the counties is not going to be a pretty picture because I certainly don't want to take on any more uh, taxes or unfunded mandates from the federal government or the state government. So I just want to make that comment of the size. Uh, if anybody out there listening has $4 billion they'd like to send a check to the state, we can straighten it out, but that's not going to happen. But it's a big, big, big problem that we're facing. When I say we, we all are facing. Larry. Ma'am. Uh, is it this not a fact that the unemployment insurance that we had to borrow from the federal government, the state legislature tried to limit or go back to 22 weeks and the federal government would not allow it if we borrowed the money? In other words, the federal government forced us to do this? Uh I would have to be honest, I do not know. I know that they talked about cutting the time limits on it, and they was also talking about cutting it from 550 a week to 350 a week. But as far as whether or not the federal government actually mandated, I can't say because I don't know. I haven't read that information well, yet. Well, I, I listened to Austin Allran, okay. who is well, our he Senate, a, yeah. and he informed us that they were now looking into it to see if they couldn't, uh, the legislature, North Carolina legislature, could not uh, override that. Mm -hmm. They have... Uh, attorneys looking into it because the federal government did not want us to cut it. Right. They okay. wanted us to keep borrowing money that they borrowed from China. Right. <laughs> to okay. keep us. All right. Is there any other discussion? Mr. Chairman, I got 
uh, we, we'll go through these things. There's one in here uh, uh, where they're wanting to raise Medicaid revenues because of the expenses related to medical service. Mm -hmm. And it just hit me as strange. Have they ever thought about sitting down with the medical field and saying, what could we do to eliminate expenses? What could we do to make the system simpler and easier to use? And uh, this kind of thing. Uh, it's always, let's raise money rather than look at how we could do it and uh, eliminate some expense. Right. So I'll shut up now. Well, that's fine. I mean, it's, that's the, now this is the type of discussion now that, they, that we had there in, uh, in Durham. And uh, it was, it was uh, like I say, it's very interesting. And uh, you know, the majority there won. I will tell you this. There were some very, very close votes. It wasn't like, you know, 60 to 10 or anything like that. Some of them were probably, Rick, what would you say, one by three or four votes. And uh, uh, that's why I say it's one of the uh, best sessions that, uh, that I've attended to hear the discussion go on to uh, about legislative goals. It was a very, very impressive. Any other discussion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask a question since you attended the conference. You and Mr. French did and I did not. What was the vote on? Um, the county's taking over secondary roads. Oh, it was like, it was 100% in favor of the county's not doing it. Yeah. I just wanted everybody to know yeah. that that has been a discussion that's been uh, thunder in the distance for several years. Not exactly. It's a bill that's been in a committee in the I, I General wanna, Assembly for mind, about four if, years. Yeah, right. if you don't mind, if, if I'll finish. There's a senator from uh, Mecklenburg, Mecklenburg County, Mecklenburg. Senator Dan Clodfelter, uh, who has been sponsoring a bill to have the counties take over secondary roads. Of course, he's in minority now, but if that happened in Alexandria County, we would be in a tough position. And it's kind of what Mr. Uh, uh, Yoder alluded to a while ago. The larger counties like Wake County, Mecklenburg County, Forsyth County, they don't have the secondary roads that the smaller counties have. So this is not a big deal for them. But it really is for us, and I just want the folks out there listening, watching, is to contact their state legislator. If they don't know who it is in, in Alexander County, Mark Hollow is our state representative, and Austin Alran is our state senator, and say we do not want to take over secondary road maintenance. Any other discussion? Those in favor indicate raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. Motion carries four to one. And uh, the negative vote had already uh, informed us was why he was voting uh, no on the issue. Item number uh, three, Board of Appointments and Reappointments, Western Piedmont Council of Government Sister Cities Association, Mr. Rick French, County Manager. Thank you. The uh, appointment is to, the re is to reappoint Dwight Shook for one year and David Eisenhower as the alternate. I'll accept the motion to approve. So moved. Second. The motion is made and second. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor indicate raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. The motion carries. Item number four budget ordinance amendments number 35 and number 39, 35 through 39. Mr. French. Thank you. Uh, budget amendment number 35 is to increase. Information Technology Department budget for purpose of iPads for governing body and technology equipment for the new detention center funds to be transferred from governing body and Rocky Face Park budgets to the information technology budget. The iPads are will be replacing the laptops and we're working towards going paperless on the board. Um, also, the budget amendment is to increase human resource budget for increased pre-employment screenings and to increase health department budget for additional healthy mothers, healthy children state funds. Uh, budget amendment number 36 is to increase the sheriff's department budget for project lifesaver expense for unspent amount from fiscal year 2012 budget $914 and fiscal year 2013 grant from Walmart for $2,000 received in December of 2012. And to increase the jail budget for estimated cost of detention, uh, contracted detention, the original budget estimates were based on an earlier opening date for the new detention center, which was, <coughs> bless you, which was in October. Uh, budget amendment number 37, which is several pages, um, is to budget for a 2.5% 
pay increase for full-time employees making less than $50,000 per year as of 2-1-13 and two employees classified as part-time with benefits making less than $50,000 per year as of 2-1-13. This 2.5% increase is effective with the 3-8-13 pay date. Number 38, budget amendment 38 is uh, for the solid waste fund to the same thing to budget for 2.5% pay increase um, for the full-time employees making less than $50,000 per year, uh, the same as the other. And 39 is for um, our water, county water and sewer fund, and it's to budget for 2.5% pay increase for full-time employees making less than $50,000 per year as of February 1st, 2013. And it would be, it would, uh, be effective with the March 8, 2013 pay date. And those are the budget amendments. I'll be glad to answer any questions if I can about those. You know, only, I don't have any questions. I have one statement I'd like to make. Uh, in the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, budget amendment about the, uh, the uh, sheriff's department and their uh, uh, project lifesaver expense, Yes, sir. I, uh, I know when they came and asked us for that to see if we would do that, they were talking about what a good program it was and everything, and we all agreed that it was. Uh, it'd be nice if, uh, I know the sheriff can't come every time, but if, if he would send a representative that handles that so that he could tell, they could tell about that program some more. Yes, sir. I think it's a very good program for our seniors, and uh, uh, especially with the fact that we have uh, uh, retirement homes and nursing homes and everything that, that you know, those things could be available to folks and uh, especially if somebody had Alzheimer's or something, it'd be a very effective tool for those folks to have on. I, I'd just like to see him come back and give an update on it. Okay. Just for the public so that they'd know what was going on. We'll, we'll ask. Ladies and gentlemen, motion, uh, I'd entertain a motion at this time to approve the budget amendments as are. I make a motion to approve. Motion's made. Is there a second? Second. Motion's made and second. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. <coughs> the motion carries four to one. <coughs> Other business, <coughs> county manager's report, Mr. French. Thank you. There are several items uh, to call to your attention and report on tonight. Uh, one in your packet uh, is some information concerning the Drinking Water State Revolving Loan Fund. Uh, Alexander County will receive $3,210,000 for a water uh, grant. It's a no in zero interest loan and it's for improvements in the Bethlehem water system. We have been working on this uh, loan since 2009. Mm -hmm. um, the project, uh, the construction of the project will not uh, start until summer of this year. There's still a lot of steps to go, but they've set aside the funds for us, and you have that information in your packet. Also, I passed out earlier, um, we were looking at <coughs> debt refinancing for two school projects in the Bethlehem Water District. Uh, one uh, proposal is to amend the installment financing debt for the Ellendale School debt, which has a currently has an interest rate of 4.97%, and it matures in March of 2021. Uh, we're proposing that we refinance the, the $3,012,261 <coughs> outstanding balance as of March 30th. The new interest rate of 2.59% is subject to final confirmation by the bank. Uh, the bank, which is Wells Fargo, will waive the prepayment penalty in the original debt contract at the county will refinance with Wells Fargo, which is a $60,000 penalty. The estimated interest savings um, for, the, for this is $332,976 with the same maternity, debt, maturity date. Uh, the second one is the school classroom project debt for East Alexander, West Alexander, Sugarloaf, and Stony Point. It has, currently has an interest rate of 4.05% and matures September of 2017. Uh, 
we're proposing to refinance the $1,155,000 outstanding balance as of March 31st. New interest rate would be 1.73% subject to final confirmation by the bank. And it is also Wells Fargo will waive the prepayment penalty in the original debt contract that the county will refinance, which is a $23,000 penalty. The estimated interest savings is almost $67,000 at $66,990. Total savings to the school will be over uh, $400,000 for those uh, refinancing or the amendment installment financing debt on those two projects. Also, um, we're looking at refinancing the Bethlehem Water District uh, for the 2003 refunding of the bonds. We'd be refinancing $863,000 $459, that's the outstanding balance as of April the 1st, 2013. New interest rate would be 1.91%, subject to the final confirmation by the bank. Um, and the estimated savings would be $51,000. It has the same, would have the same maturity date. We are requesting the Board of Commissioners to allow the County Manager and Finance Director to proceed with refinancing the existing debt issues with Wells Fargo and BB&T as listed above. Please note these items will be considered debt issuance for purposes of the small issue exemption, which is the $10 million limit uh, for a calendar year. I have some other things, but I, I need action Mr. on that Chairman, one. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve Second. this refinancing. This looks like a pretty good saving. And Mr. French, uh, yep. this is basically over Four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, is it not? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, the motion's been made and second to approve. Is there any other discussion? Uh <clears throat> Commissioner Jennings, did you say that's a savings of four hundred and fifty thousand dollars? I didn't hear you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um Okay, that's all I have. That sounds good, don't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> any other discussion? All those in favor indicate raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. The motion carries, Mr. French. Thank you. Uh, two other items to mention. Our next meeting uh, will be February 25th, and the, the next uh, Golden Leaf Money and Golden Leaf meeting, um, which is about money, is on February 26, 2013, here at CVCC. And this is, we're sort of getting at the end of the line with Golden Leaf. and. Um, we're getting into the grant cycle, so just want to mention those dates, and I'll be glad to try to answer any questions. Mr. Uh, Mr. French, I just yes, wanted to uh, say it, it, that letter of intent to award the loan for the Bethlehem Water Project, we've been working on that since 2009, and uh, that's, that's how long some of these things take to get, get through. Uh, government moves a lot slower than what I would like and the rest of the commissioners would like, but that's, that's the way it is. Um, <clears throat> I, I noticed that uh, Commissioner Robertson and yourself had a uh, um, two-day meeting in um, Asheville over the weekend for the Smoky Mountain Center. Uh, as far as um, mental health issues, can you guys give us a report on what they think is going to happen at the state this year? The, the two major issues we dealt with was with our governance of how that's proposing to change with Smoky Mountain Center. Uh, currently the board, Smoky Mountain Board has 30 members. The legislation from last year, which becomes effective October this year, will make it effective in October uh, that we get to 21 members, which it'll, it, uh, Smoky Mountain represents 15 counties. And so there's a commissioner from each county and an at-large member from every county. So it's gonna make it, um, we're gonna have to work through some things. Uh, the other items uh, involve the, f the funding that all the counties provide, which is a small percentage of Smoky Mountain's budget, which, which is just a couple percent, but it's important to all the counties. And, make, and there was a discussion about the equi equitable portion of that funding. Um, <coughs> so that, that's pretty much it. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Richard, I'm thinking we were at the association meeting also that we discussed the fact about getting making sure that uh, there was a commissioner on these boards on uh, from each county that was represented 
and that discussion was held. Did, was there any conversation whatsoever at your board meetings about that, that as far as, as that happening? Because I know that you know, I mean, that's cool. fine, but the only thing that bothers me about it is that there are some folks that just absolutely don't know, they don't know about mental health, and uh, uh, it's a very learning and uh, that experience. Was, that was one of the items in the association report right. that uh, every county would be represented. So they're going to have to change their number or uh, bless their hearts if the Division of Health and Human Service can figure out mm -hmm. the direction right. they're going in and stay in it. Uh, they might get something done, but uh, in those items that the association had, right. part of it was uh, Medicaid, which uh, a lot of that falls under the Division of Health and Human Services. Right. Uh, the expenses we've already talked about, uh, assistance to the elderly as far as transportation. Uh, one of my favorites is their computer projects. Uh, they've uh, been, uh, they missed last year as far as Medicaid overruns. Uh, they didn't get that to the General Assembly. They told them what it was going to be, and two weeks later they had revised numbers. Uh, and now they're doing uh, uh, software to help monitor uh, mental health and social services, I'm sure, health department. Uh, the division, uh, I think, is running way behind the rest of the world as far as uh, how to handle things. Uh, but Mental health is going to be an interesting issue in the next uh, several months. It really is. Uh, well, how do you think that is, Daryl? What's that? That it's, uh, you know, it's running behind. Uh, because lack of funds or lack no, of no lack of lack of organization and ability okay. is my opinion okay. uh, the uh, Medicaid uh, for example and I've asked this question several times they talk about we need to keep be able to keep up with Medicaid Medicaid I think happens in 50 states in this country and I've asked a question is there one state that has an operating software system that'll handle Medicaid and the answer I've got every time I've asked it is no I don't know. Mr. French. Uh, Different world. Uh, Mr. Yoke, I may ask Mr. French one more question. Uh, most of you know that uh, the Golden Leaf Foundation grant uh, is for the amount of $2 million. <coughs> that doesn't necessarily mean that Alexander County is going to get all the $2 million or that different elements within the county is going to give me $2 million. But the comment is meant to, meant to say that if we have an opportunity to get a dollar, it's a dollar more than we have now. So the Golden Leaf Foundation is uh, uh, an excellent opportunity for the county to get more money that would not obligate the county citizens to pay any more taxes to get that money. That's the money that goes from the Golden Leaf Foundation to the county. And we're obviously we're hoping to get more than a dollar. But I just wanted to point that out, that it's $2 million, and $2 million is a lot of money. So we're, we're hoping we can get all we can get. Okay. Thank you, sir. Consent agenda. Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. The motion is made and second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. The motion carries. Thank you very much. At this time, we'll go into adjournment for closed session under North Carolina General Statutes 143-318.11, paragraph A, 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6, to prevent disclosure of confidential information, degrees, prizes, or awards, economic development, contractual, and personnel. I'll make that in the form. We will uh, re-adjourn for the primary purpose only of adjourning. Second. I'll make that form of motion. Second. Second. Motion is made. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, indicate raising your right hand. Those opposed, likewise. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.